Hello everyone, how are you doing? In today's lesson, we are going to work with three different topics. First of all, the definitions, then the branches, and finally, the characteristics of English for a specific purpose. Okay, let's start with the first topic, which is the definitions. Um, what is ESP? Well, defining ESP has proven to be so problematic to researchers and producing a simple definition of ESP is not an easy task. Throughout history, you are going to find that many scholars tried to define ESP in different ways. So you are going to find so many definitions as the scholars and researchers are throughout the history in the world. So you are not going to have just one definition for ESP. So you have to pay attention to that. Let's see some authors. Um, here we have, according to McKay, according to McKay and Mouthful, ESP is, is generally used to refer to the teaching of English for a clearly utilitarian purpose. What's that? Um, English should be taught to achieve a specific language skills using real situations, okay? In a manner that allows the learners to use English in their future profession or to understand, to comprehend English discourse related to their field, their area of speciality. This is what Mackay and Mautford state. In the same line, Robinson states that generally the students study English not because they are interested in the English language or English culture as such, but because they need English for a study or work purposes. In other words, when you design an ESP course, you are going to find these kind of learners who are seeking for a study in English because they need it, they need the language for academic purposes and not because they like the language itself. Now let's see what Anthony says. Anthony argue that some people described ESP as simply being the teaching of English for any purpose that could be specified. Others, however, were more precise describing it as the teaching of English used in academic studies or the teaching of English for vocational or professional purposes. This shows you that the role of ESP is to help language learners to build up the needed abilities or the needed skills in order to use them in a specific field, occupation or workplace. Okay? In 2001, Richards states that ESP teaching aims are these authors present you some objective of ESP teaching. The first one, the first objective or the first aim is preparing non-native speaking students for a study in the English medium academic context. In this case, you are going to teach learners who need this foreign language for study purposes. And as they are non-native speakers, they may not have a good level of English. So, and you have to prepare them in that specific context. In this case, in the academic context. Number two, preparing those already fluent or who have mastered general English, but now need English for a specific usage in employment, such as engineers, scientists, or nurses. In this case, the group of learners have a good level of English, but they need to learn is 
a specific usage in a particular field. Okay, here we have another group of learners. You have a group of learners who have a good level of English, but they need to um, to learn that specific part, okay? The, those um, specific um, usages of the language in their uh, employment itself, in, for their work itself, okay? Now let's see number three. Responding to the needs of the materials of English for business purposes. Uh, when we see the origin of ESP, we are going to see some of the reasons of ESP emergence. And one of the, these reasons uh, was the expansion in commerce. So, there was a flood of courses and materials for business purposes to fulfill the necessity to learn English for economic purposes. So, the idea, one of the English, um, for a specific purposes teaching objectives was to respond to those needs, the needs of those materials, okay, specifically. And let's see number four, teaching immigrants the English needed to deal with their job situation. Okay, in some occasions, as ESP teachers, you can be asked to design a course for foreigners who need for their job. For instance, people who have to move abroad for work uh, and they need to learn English to perform their job successfully. So, you can be asked to design a course like that. So, you have to bear in mind the ESP teaching objectives as Richards proposes. Let's see another author. As Pastor Mung um, states in ESP, language is learned not for its own sake or for the sake of gaining a general education, but to smooth the path to entry a greater linguistic in efficiency in academic, professional, or workplace environment. This means that typically ESP has functioned or has worked to help la language learners manage the features or the characteristics of the language or to develop the competencies needed in, an, in a specific discipline, profession, or workplace. Now, let's move to Hutchinson and Waters. Well, these two authors tried to define ESP not by showing you what ESP is, but by showing what ESP is not. So, pay attention to that because it's quite, quite interesting. So, <clears throat> the first one, uh, they propose that ESP is not a matter of teaching specialized varieties of English. We should not confuse that ESP is a special form of the language, a different type of the language. No, no, pay attention to that. Of course, we are going to find typical features of a particular context that these differences should not be regarded as another form of the language. Be careful with that. The second one, they state that ESP is not just a matter of science, words and grammar for scientists, hotel words and grammar for hotel staff, and so on. Here, do not think that teaching ESP is a matter of teaching your learners only terms related to their discipline or special grammatical patterns. No, you have to teach them to use the language, that is to say, to provide them with the necessary skills and knowledge to be able to succeed in using the language, okay, in their workplace, 
or in their studies or in any um, field that they need. And the third one, um, they consider that ESP is not different in kind from any other form of language teaching in that it should be based in the first instance on principle of effective and efficient learning. What does it mean? The content of learning can vary according to the discipline or the field of your group of learners, but the process for learning ESP should be the same as for learning general English. It doesn't mean that you are going to use a special methodology for teaching ESP. No, no, no. The methodologies you should be the ones, the same ones, that you use for teaching and learning any kind of English. So, it's, it doesn't mean that you have to invent a new methodology for teaching ESP. You know the a language learning teaching methodologies that you use for your uh, classes, for general English classes or lessons. So, the same ones you can apply or you should apply for ESP. So, you don't need a different kind of methodology. To, to sum up, all the previous definitions can be considered as common core, uh, because they describe ESP as teaching a specific content and the skills of English to a specific group of learners, aiming at communicating effectively in academic or vocational situations. In other words, uh, ESP involves training learners in the particular skills and language they need in order to function in a particular set of professional situations in English, uh, learners are grouped according to their, ne their needs, not just their language level, and the trainer or the teacher tries to adapt each course to the learner's particular needs. Um, that is to say, you are going to tailor, you are going to design ESP uh, courses uh, for learners who seek to learn English for specific purposes. With intention to use it um, to achieve some other goal in the performance of a specific task or job or activity, for example, to understand the instruction in, in the aircraft maintenance manuals, for instance. As this, you can have many other examples.